The Netherlands is a great place if you don't want to drive. There are lots of areas that are pedestrianized and nearly car-free. Trains are so pervasive and frequent that they work almost like a country-wide metro system. Plus, rail stations have giant bicycle parking garages and high-quality public transit connections to get you to your final destination. And there are bicycle paths almost everywhere. In many cases, cyclists can take the fastest and most direct route to where they're going, while drivers need to take the long way around. I get a lot of comments on this channel by people who say that they love cars and would hate to live somewhere like this. But what they don't realize is that driving is awesome in the Netherlands. This summer, I traveled to Canada to visit family and I did a lot of driving while I was there. After almost two years away, it was a real shock to go from the comfortable, civilized driving experience in the Netherlands to driving in Canada. It made me appreciate how good we have it here. I'm not the only one who thinks this either. Take for example the YouTube channel Kerleem, an American and self-professed car guy who lives in Amsterdam and has made several videos about how much he prefers driving in the Netherlands compared to places like Toronto or his home state of Florida. And yet Florida is a state that is infamous for how car-centric it is and how hostile it is for pedestrians and cyclists. It should be a great place to drive, but it's not. Further proof is available from Waze, who used to collect data from their platform to determine a driver satisfaction index each year. And they determined that the Netherlands was the best country in the world to be a driver. This doesn't surprise me at all. Driving in the Netherlands is so pleasant. The infrastructure is of high quality, and it's in great condition. And in general, traffic is pretty light and flows pretty smoothly. Sure, there's traffic in rush hour, but rush hour is still about an hour. It's not a near constant traffic jam spread throughout the day like in most US and Canadian cities. It's more like a traffic hakelslag, lightly sprinkled over the week. And there are clever approaches to temporary traffic conditions on the highway, such as these rush hour lanes that open when necessary, and changing speed limits based on congestion because drivers traveling slower have less space between cars and make better use of the road space. It blows my mind that driving out of town on a long weekend doesn't involve getting stuck in soul-crushing traffic, like it does in almost every other city I've lived in. You'll see lots of caravans and bicycles attached to cars, but otherwise, it's hardly any different than a regular day. I've lived in cities that have a quarter the population of Amsterdam, yet traffic in them is considerably worse. This all comes down to the fundamental truth. There's no solution to traffic congestion except viable alternatives to driving, and most Dutch cities have viable alternatives to driving for many trips, which reduces the number of cars on the road. In many Dutch cities, taking a bicycle is often the fastest way to get somewhere, because cyclists can usually take the shortest and most direct route, while drivers need to take the long way around. You might think that this is bad for drivers, but it's not, because if cycling wasn't faster, many of these people would be in cars, and the streets would be so clogged with traffic that the direct route would be even slower than the indirect route is today. In fact, this was the case in Amsterdam in the 1970s. It may seem counterintuitive, but designing to prioritize walking, cycling, and public transit actually works out better for drivers. And, unsurprisingly, the Dutch cities that are the most car-centric also have the worst traffic. One of the things that makes driving here particularly pleasant is the fact that the traffic lights are smarter, so you end up waiting a lot less. I made a video about traffic lights from the point of view of cyclists and pedestrians, but they work better for drivers, too. Almost every traffic light in the Netherlands has multiple detection loops. One at the stop line, like in many other countries, but also at least one farther back. This junction has three of them. This allows the traffic control system to intelligently schedule the stoplights based on the traffic detected from each direction. For example, you will very often see the traffic light turn red just as the last car passes the stop line. This is because the control system uses the farther detection loop to determine that there isn't another car approaching, so it's safe to change the light to red early and let another direction go while there's a gap in traffic. 
It also works to turn a light green early if it detects your car or bike is approaching when it's safe to stop traffic in other directions. Another difference is that, in the US and Canada, traffic lights are stupid and go all green in one direction followed by all green in the other direction. But here in the Netherlands, traffic lights work in multiple phases, so there are many different combinations possible for things like dedicated right turns and left turns simultaneously. This not only speeds up waiting times at traffic lights, it also makes turning much less dangerous and stressful because when you have a green arrow, you're almost always clear to turn. In particular, the left turn across traffic on a strode is one of the most dangerous and stressful driving maneuvers in the United States and Canada. I almost never need to perform a turn like this in the Netherlands. Speaking of strodes, there are almost none in the Netherlands as I've talked about in previous videos. This means that when you're on a road, there are very few side streets, driveways, or crossings to slow you down. This has so many benefits that it's hard to list them all. In general, the lack of strodes keeps traffic moving smoothly and, even if the speed limit is lower, your average speed is much higher because there are fewer cars merging in and out and fewer traffic lights. This is something that people don't appreciate enough. Strodes have so many driveways and side streets that require merging into high-speed traffic that some driveways inevitably get traffic buildups from people trying to exit. The solution is to install a traffic light, which is why there are so many traffic lights in most North American cities. In the newest Strong Towns book, Confessions of a Recovering Engineer, author Chuck Marone measured his average speed at rush hour and found that it was about 16 kilometers per hour. Actually, it was an average of less than 10 miles per hour, but I'm converting everything to metric here because Imperial units are stupid. So, despite the roads having a speed limit of 50 km per hour or more, his average speed was less than 16 because of all the traffic lights. And this was in a tiny town of only 14,000 people. Incidentally, 16 km an hour is the average speed of a cyclist in Amsterdam, because bicycle routes are designed to avoid traffic lights and to keep cyclists moving. This really shows you how backwards American traffic engineering is, when the average speed of a car in a small town in the US is the same as a bicycle in the largest and busiest city in the Netherlands. I had the same experience when driving in my hometown this summer. I was constantly sitting at red lights when I was driving simply because there are so many of them. And if there aren't traffic lights, there are stop signs. So many stop signs. Instead of designing proper traffic calming, North American traffic engineers just put stop signs everywhere to slow down drivers. I already made a previous video about why I hate stop signs and why they shouldn't be required at all, especially for cyclists. But yeah, it's so nice to drive through the Netherlands and not see any stop signs at all. And the very, very, very few times you see one, it's actually necessary. Of course, there are many intersections with roundabouts too, which is even better. Then there's almost no waiting at all and traffic flows even more efficiently. Though roundabouts can get backed up if there's too much car traffic, so they don't work everywhere. Of course, the Dutch have a solution for that too, which is turbo roundabouts, but they deserve their own video someday. I would gladly take a road with a lower maximum speed limit if that road design means that I achieve a higher average speed, and that is exactly what I experience driving in the Netherlands. I made a video about speed limits recently, but what's relevant here is that speed limits in the Netherlands mostly make sense. Different streets with different speed limits are designed differently, so you rarely need to check your speed. The speed that feels right on a given street is usually the correct one. When I was driving in my hometown this summer, I was constantly needing to check what the speed limit was, because everything is designed like a giant strode yet the speed limit could be anywhere from 40 km an hour to 80 km an hour with no difference in road design. Another factor that makes driving in the Netherlands less stressful is that the drivers themselves are better. There are many aspects of this, such as stricter licensing requirements, but I believe the single most important factor is that, in most Dutch cities, there are viable alternatives to driving. This means that the only people who are driving are those people who want to drive or those people who need to drive. Most people who live in a Dutch city can make many trips by walking, cycling, or public transit. Even if somebody drives to work, they may still get their grocery shopping by bicycle, walk to a doctor's appointment, or take public transportation to a football game. 
In particular, shopping by bicycle or by walking is a very low stress activity and it's usually done when you're on the way home from somewhere else, so it doesn't even feel like a chore. In car dependent places, you need to drive for everything, so even the most trivial of errands like buying a bag of milk feels like a trip. Not only does this result in a huge amount of excess cars on the road, contributing to more traffic, it also just sucks to do. It sucks to have to get in your car and drive in traffic to do normal everyday tasks like going to an appointment or feeding your family. Some people may like cars, but driving in this traffic is not fun. So when you get a whole city of people who are forced to do something that sucks every single day, you get a lot of pissed off people on the road. That's not to say that there are no assholes on the road here in the Netherlands. I mean, they sell a lot of Audis here too. But there simply isn't the same level of angry, distracted, or bored drivers that you have to contend with in a car-dependent city. This contributes so much to making the driving experience more pleasant here. And this is even more noticeable when walking or cycling, because you're not dealing with hyper-aggressive impatient jerks every time you encounter a car. Of course, it also helps that conflicts between drivers and cyclists are kept to a minimum in the Netherlands, either with protected bicycle paths, or by providing totally separate routes for bicycles. This also makes it less stressful to drive, because despite there being so many cyclists in the Netherlands, I find it much easier to avoid people on bicycles when I'm driving. Most people want to avoid hitting pedestrians and cyclists unless you're a pickup driver in Houston or something, so having fewer points of conflict with people outside of cars makes driving easier. Another thing that makes driving great in the Netherlands is that the road infrastructure is of extremely high quality and it's exquisitely maintained. Seriously, I've been living in the Netherlands for three years now and this is the only bad pothole I've ever seen. It was so notable that I went home to get my camera to film it. This blows my mind. There's a lot of myths about where potholes come from, but when you boil it all down, they're caused by two things. Lots of heavy vehicles and insufficient maintenance. The formation of potholes can be sped up a lot by freeze-thaw cycles, but this only happens if water is allowed to enter cracks in the asphalt or if there is poor drainage of the road. If cracks are filled promptly and water is not allowed to penetrate, then potholes are much less likely to form. Look at any list online of the worst roads in America and you'll see sunny places like Honolulu, Los Angeles, and Baton Rouge right alongside New York, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. The fact is, when your city is built only for cars and trucks, you're going to have a lot more car and truck traffic. And as Strong Towns has taught us, if your city is made up of sprawling car-dependent infrastructure, then it's not capable of financially sustaining itself. This is ultimately the real reason why the roads are in such poor condition in many other cities. There's just too much asphalt and stormwater management infrastructure per person to properly maintain it all. This leads to the sad irony. Designing your city only for cars makes the roads worse for drivers. And then there's the issue of tax. Drivers simply do not pay the full cost of the roads, period. This is especially true in the United States where the federal gas tax has been the same since 1993 at 18.4 cents per gallon, while the number of miles of asphalt and construction costs have skyrocketed. But that's a larger topic that deserves its own video someday. And finally, driving in the Netherlands just looks nicer too. You wouldn't think it makes a big difference, but it does. It's so much nicer to drive along a road like this than a strode like this. This is like the origin of the parkway concept. Just as people like taking walks in parks, mid-century traffic engineers thought that people would enjoy going on drives along parkways. So many parkways were created in the US and Canada as a place for leisure driving. Of course, due to induced demand, those parkways became more like parking lots. Trust me, I did not enjoy taking the Don Valley Parkway to work every day. I don't particularly like cars and I treat them like any other kind of tool. Car enthusiasts are really bizarre to me because it's like being a power saw enthusiast. I mean, yeah, they're pretty cool, but I really don't care about them unless I need to cut some wood. Now, power washers, on the other hand, are something I could get into. So if the Netherlands can make someone like me appreciate driving, then it's really impressive. Though I must admit that my favorite part of driving in the Netherlands is when I park the car 
and get back on my bike. Because what's even better than driving in the Netherlands is cycling here. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to extol my love of driving. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, visit patreon.com slash notjustbikes.